Dmenu is an amazing application, but can it do this? Contextual completion, at least without completely modifying the application from the ground up or opening up a new prompt every single time you select something, the answer to that question is no. So today we're looking at an application known as XPROMPT, which described itself as a D menu ripoff. I'm not being mean to it, that is literally what it says on the GitHub. I'll get into the contextual completion stuff in just a moment, but one thing to keep in mind is all of the data you could pass into dmenu is going to work the exact same way in this application. So basically, think of this application as like a superset of dmenu. So I've got a file right here called file3. Every single word in this file is on a separate line. So each of these separate words is going to be a separate option in both dmenu and also xprompt. So if we go and run xprompt with that file, so catting the file into xprompt, if we then go and press tab, as we can see, all of those words are now separate options. Now, the most obvious difference between this and dmenu is if we do the same thing with dmenu instead, dmenu is actually going to have all of those things listed out on the screen. Personally, I prefer this way of working, but either way gets the job done. So the way you interact with XPROMPT is basically the same way as you interact with dmenu. So we can either go and tab through the separate options in this list, or shift tab to go in the other direction. One thing that does bother me is it doesn't have cyclic tabbing, and that is a problem in every application that doesn't have it. Or the other option is we can go and start typing stuff, and that will actually go and filter the list. So if I go and then select the let's say the this option, then we press enter, that will then output that value. It should be noted that arrow keys won't let you cycle through the list of values, they're only going to be for cycling through the letters you actually have inside of the text field. But something unlike dmenu is you actually have the option to use your mouse. Now, I don't know why you would ever go and do that, but it's nice to at least have the option. But speaking of things that aren't like dmenu, contextual completion. Now, the way this works is pretty straightforward. So normally you're going to have a file that is just new line separated data. There's not going to be anything at the front of those lines. But if you add in a tab, make sure it's a tab and not spaces. Spaces will not work. What's actually going to happen is these things that are tabbed in are now going to be in the context of the word at the higher level. I think the best way to explain this is to actually just show you. So if we now go and run the application again, if we press tab, you'll notice that some of the words are now missing from the list. So both world and this are no longer visible. So now they're actually inside of the context of hello. So if we go and type in hello, select that one, and do another tab completion, now those words are actually there. But this isn't just for a single depth. I don't know if there is a depth limit, but I certainly haven't found one. So in this case, if we go and run the application again, so hello, then tab complete again, world, tab complete again, and now we can actually select this. So what in the world is the point of that? Well, let's say we have an example like we saw at the beginning, where you have a command that has a bunch of subcommands, for example, like git. So we have git, that has a subcommand that is commit, we also have things like add, we have stash, and a bunch of other stuff like that. So what you could do is inside of this file have git be the main command, and then under that you have, say, commit indented, add indented, stash indented, and all of the other fun commands, and then when you run this, after you go and type in git, all of those things are going to be available as subcommands you can select. Now with one command like this, it's not that useful, but maybe there are a bunch of related commands. For example, you have your make commands and your git commands, all that fun stuff, all the developer related stuff, all in one place. So when you run this script, it's very easy to go and select it. Now obviously git is a bad example because there is a built in way to do this completion already, but there are plenty of other situations that are structured like this. Now, if you paid attention at the start of the video, you may have noticed that something is still missing. What that something is, is a description. So let's go and have a look at file two again. As we can see, it actually explains what those commands actually do. The way we do this is also very, very straightforward. So let's go back over to file two. All you need to do is after you've got that value in here, 
basically tab again after it, and then anything after that second tab on the same line is going to be the description. Now, rather than just running xpomp by itself, it actually has some really useful arguments. One of those is the dash f argument, which is the file argument. So the way this works is when there is nothing left in the file to actually tab complete. So when we get to the bottom of the tab completion tree, so with a git commit, for example, now it's actually going to prompt us with file names. So I could go and select something like the readme file, and basically I'll be running git commit readme. If you can't see how this is useful, I'm, I'm really not sure how. Now, by default, the application is also going to be case sensitive. So if we go and type in capital G, that can't be filled out to git. If you'd like to change that, that can be done by passing in the dash I argument. And for whatever your use case might be, maybe case sensitivity just does not matter, in which case this might actually help. There is also a dash S option, which could be really useful, but in its current state feels a little bit janky. The way it works is the first time you select something, doesn't matter if it's the start or the end of the context tree, that is going to be when the application actually quits. So if we go and select git here, basically the application quits right there. Normally the way that works is it's actually going to keep running until you go and get to the bottom of the tree. I mentioned earlier that you can search by the description, and the way that works is with the dash D argument. Now, the one problem I have with this argument is it doesn't actually show what the original value actually was. Now it only shows the description, which is fine in some use cases. Let's say the value is the ID of the window, and then the description is the name of that window. In that case, you don't really care what the ID actually was, as long as the ID is actually correct. But in a lot of other situations, seeing both pieces of information at the same time might actually be useful. Now, when you do actually select the description, what it's going to do is basically autofill out the value that was previously there. So when you finish using the application, you actually get the original value at the end rather than the description value. It's worth noting that most of this stuff can be done with dmenu, with the exception of the contextual completion. But with dmenu, you're going to require some extra tools alongside of it to actually do some of the extra processing. Xprompt does all of this stuff by itself. The GitHub has a really good explanation of some different use cases you might have. For example, like the contextual completion, like I mentioned earlier, the listing descriptions, and in this case, how you might go about doing it if you were using dmenu instead. Also, there are geometry options. So if you want to have the bar on the bottom of your screen or maybe like somewhere around the center, all of that stuff can be done, and the GitHub also does a fairly good job at explaining this, but for me, I like having the bar on the top of my screen, and I don't know why you would ever go about moving it. But the option is there, and that is nice to see. One thing, though, is if you want to have it somewhere that isn't the uh, top or the bottom, it is going to be a, a little bit glitchy. What I mean by that is this right here. So this bar is going to be 800 wide and 20 pixels high, 100 pixels from the left, and 200 pixels from the top. So for some reason, it's got this little like artifacting there. When I go and say, you know, do the tab completion, there's also a big line of artifacting here as well. I don't know if this is just something caused by my system, but it is worth pointing out. Now, being a self-proclaimed dmenu ripoff, obviously that means it's going to be configured like a suckless application. So that means by modifying the C code directly. So go into your config.h file, and then it's pretty straightforward, actually. There's not really that much in here you can do. So obviously you can modify your theme. Uh, I've left it as default, but if I was going to use this, I would make it look like my existing dmenu does. And then anything not in the config file, you're basically expected to go and modify the C code directly. That is inside of the xprompt.c and obviously xprompt.h for the header file. Now, even if there is a package on your distro, because of the way we configure this, I wouldn't recommend using it. Basically, just go and download the source code from the GitHub, and then when you want to go and install it, go and run make, and then make install, and then you'll be good to go. Now, for me, 
I don't have a use case for the contextual completion because all of my existing D menu scripts, because I've been working around D menu, are I select one thing and then it's done. I select a bookmark for my web browser, it goes and runs the bookmark. I go and select an application, it launches the application, all of that fun stuff. But if you actually have something where you need those layers of contextual completion, let's say you want to make, I don't know, a file manager based around a D menu style of interaction, this is something you might want to look into. So that's going to be it for me. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this application. Is it something you would actually go and use? Maybe you're happy with what DMenu currently does. Maybe you actually have a use case for this. Or maybe you're using Rofi and have no idea why you're watching a video about a D-menu replacement. I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to go and support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got my podcast, Tech of a Tea, and my gaming channel, Brody Robson Plays, down there as well. And that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.